Alrighty then, let's take a look at the mm, February 27th of Fer uh, yeah the February 27th patch notes. These are currently live on live server. After that, we'll take a look at March 6th, which happened on PTR yesterday, which is the public test realm server. This is going to go live in a week, so it's both very relevant. This is currently affecting us. This will happen in just one week from now. All right. So currently live, but you haven't seen it on my stream yet. It's changes to Tychus. He's one of the quintessential, quintessential ranged assassins. He has a very high pick rate in competitive and he's the premier anti-tank assassin, anti-warrior. But keep in mind that even though Batman is not Superman and Superman is weak to kryptonite, when you shoot Batman and you penetrate his skin with kryptonite bullets, Batman is still going to die. He's just a human. He has a very nice suit of armor. So it doesn't mean that just because you aren't Superman, you get hit by kryptonite bullets, that you should not be afraid. You should be very afraid. And thus, Tychus, with his minigun on, also can shred through Vala. But he's relatively better against warriors than other heroes. So keep that in mind when you evaluate that. Yes, exactly. Batman is not Superman. Did you l lose the analogy? Okay, so uh, in general, Tychus is good. His run rate was actually kind of weak and competitive. He's a good hero. Uh, he gets picked a lot, so Blizzard thought Tychus has proven to be just as good as assassin busting as he is a tank busting. Ergo, the kryptonite bullet argument hitting normal humans. This has made drafting him a good choice against just about anyone, which has led him to be the highest, one of the highest contested heroes in the Heroes Global Championship. We would like to see him gain the most value from sticking to frontline targets, so we're lowering his basic attack range to limit his options while allowing other ranged heroes to trade a bit more favorably against him. Of course, he would not be able to attack warriors as safely because of the range decrease. If you truly wanted to achieve anti-warriorism, you would increase his basic attack damage as well, or make his entire attack damage always percentage based, so that he truly is better against high HP. Or maybe even progressing to the point where he does even more damage than just a percentage of their HP, but over a percentage against high and under percentage against low. Just an idea. We'll have to see how it works out. I'm sure that they tried this a lot. So generally they reduce his range, which will make him come forward a bit. Will make it tougher for him to trade with Vala. They gave the same treatment to press the advantage. While letting that's the stuff heal after the entire duration of the minigun, which by the way is three seconds. That means that he cannot trade against the warrior or an assassin while standing still and surviving throughout whatever burst comes his way, he will only heal afterwards. Also, new steel coating, which is his spell armor activatable, goes up in value. The main issue that I see with this change is that he has a talent called In The Rhythm at four, and it increases the duration of his minigun from three seconds upwards. It has no limit, so it can be five seconds, it can be seven seconds, it can be 10. That means that the more effective Tychus is at stacking his minigun, the later he will receive his healing. The easy fix would be, give this one after 3 seconds period, and then give whatever bonus duration of damage you do, after the bonus dura damage duration is done. So you get healing in 2 pieces. If you don't take it in the rhythm, fine. It will be exactly the same as it is here. But at least you remove the anti-synergy within the rhythm, where you actually make it worse for yourself to get healed. Make sense? Moving on. Uh, Varian. Charge cooldown is reduced. The damage even goes up. Of, oh, sorry. Uh, that's Colossal Smash. The charge cooldown is reduced. But Warbringer is now a big s slow when you upgrade it, instead of a stun. And of course, it still has the cooldown reduction element. So Warbringer now means that uh, you get more slow charges and even a little bit more slow. No more stun. Colossus Smash does more damage, 
uh, on the auto attacks, that is, because that's his auto attack damage buff for Colossal Smash. This is 75%. Yeah. Now it's 100. So his auto attack damage is doubled instead of plus 75. And also, there is less penalty to basic attack damage on Twin Blades. And then finally, Juggernaut does less charge percentage damage. No nerf to taunt itself, but this of course is a nerf to taunt variant since this is ran. And also this one. Although Juggernaut was often not picked in favor of the uh, anti-healing strikes. And then they tried to buff this a bit. I think it's okay, Varian is a highly contested warrior. The point and click stun was OP. We all knew it from the beginning of the point and click stunness. And so, yeah. Uh, I think we all knew that from the moment he came out that it was going to be an issue. Why are we reading patch notes from a week ago? Because I haven't done it yet. And I wanted to and I haven't seen it properly yet. Because I've been gone. We're going to go to the latest patch. Don't worry. After this. Uh, Murky gets a few nerfs. Uh, less slow. Longer cooldown in March and a few other things. Lucio gets a few small nerfs. Boombox goes up. Party mix will go down. And healing boost on Amp it Up is also down a bit. Lucio was not highly contested at HCC, but there was little practice time. And so I think he will go up in value a bit. And he seems quite good, so I don't think it's wrong per se. His win rates were also pretty fine. Malfurion. The most picked heroes in the Heroes Global Championship. His roots are utterly busted. Currently. And so the duration has been reduced. Mana regen on Twilight Dream has also been reduced. And less duration bonus boost as well. Tenacious roots. I think it's good changes. It's not knee jerk. In fact it's a little late. Root was the biggest problem in his kit. I do agree. So I like these changes. I rate this one 8 out of 8. This one I rated just fine. Murky, just fine because he was too strong. Varian I think is fine. It's only Tychus that I think needs a bit of update. So, so far we're pretty happy with this patch. Tassadar. It's now 15 and 30 globes instead of 20 and 40. And the value of shield goes up rather than retaining 50%. And this one, the duration of shield goes up rather than retaining 100% of it permanently. I do think this was broken, and I'm glad it's gone. Their words on it is... One of our major goals is... Blah, blah, blah. When shifting colors and braid to a questing talent, we had hoped to lock the immense power behind a barrier that was difficult to overcome. In theory, this would make it feel rewarding to take it on certain maps, but rarely the most powerful. Instead, we found that locking this kind of potential behind an extremely difficult collection talent is... A more frustrating experience than a fun one. When taking a step back, we decided to destroy the talent. I'm glad. I did not like Kala's Embrace. He's a shielder, not a giver of 50% bonus health to people, so I'm glad. Good change. Visual indicator, never gonna contest that. I'm happy with these changes. Excellent, let's move on to the next patch. So let's take a look at the PTR patch notes for March 6th, which is basically yesterday. And it's going to affect us in one week from now. Currently it's testable on the public test realm. And in a week it will go live. So let's evaluate them and see what we think of it. And see what we can understand from it. First of all, Probius is going to come out. We have a uh, test run in the shop that we already did. You can find it on my YouTube channel or at the beginning of this stream. It ends at 48 minutes into the stream. There's going to be a special event quest. It is about Cho'Gal. Play Cho'Gal with someone who doesn't own him and you will gain Greetings, some rewards. Friend. Nice. We've had this promo before and the promo will happen again. New hero Probius. We've already seen him. Note that I have some kind of plugin that shows a cannon instead of <laughs> the word cannon. I also have Kappa faces. When someone writes Kappa on a website, I get the emote. You should look into it. It's a cool extension. All right. Uh, art, shop, and so on and so forth. That's not what I normally look at. User interface is cool though. We've seen this in the shop testing as well. And it's basically... Following stats have been added to character sheet. Physical and spell armor. That's great. Good job. Good job. 
Uh, keep an eye on allies and enemies with party frames. Yes, now at the top of the screen, you can see how much HP and mana your allies have and what heroes your opponent is playing. Also, who's dead. Great changes. A number of other things, but we'll see it in our games. Look at my Twitch channel and YouTube channel and you will see how this looks like. I don't want to dive into it too much right now. There's going to be New Heroes Brawl, which is Bloodlust Brawl, Mage Wars, Silver City. They're going to do Shuffle Pick there now. Ah... You now only need to do two games and there's going to be more shuffle pick instead of ultimate random. Okay. Also, Waygates has gotten a common rule set unification. Channels will not be interrupted by taking normal damage, specifically on Towers of Doom, Haunted Mines, Black Arts, Revenge. Channels will be interrupted by abilities such as stuns and knockbacks. Waygates can now be channeled while mounted. Thank you. Jeez. That's great. All right, let's go to the heroes. I'm going to make the potentially controversial decision to skip Cho and Gaul because they are such a long change. But we'll just do a quick one. However, we see all these damage reductions, which is kind of not a surprise when you consider that they get a new trait, which gives them ability power or armor. This is what I heard in Poland. And that's why, of course, they would need less damage. For the rest, big talent rework. I just I just can't look at it right now because it will take a little bit too long. But suffice to say that you'll see some Cho'Gal here on my channel soon. And we'll uh, we'll find out Greetings, how that works. Friend. Hey, Grubby and chat. Have a good evening, all. Thank you, Shining Force. Uh, no, there is no Waygate in Blackheart's Bay. They said Blackheart's Revenge, which is a brawl to answer you. Boys, 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 boys. Okay. Let's go to Illidan. We'll now clamp Greetings, the cost friend. to maximum range of the ability. Clamp the cost. Is this something a duchy wouldn't understand? Ah, so instead of running to the other side of the map, when you click on the other side of the map, you will meta at max range in that direction, right? Okay, makes sense. And I think that's a good thing because when Illidan freaks out and he wants to meta away, you don't want to be specific about reaching the radius of your range. You want to just throw it in that direction. This is a desired functionality. It's not consistent for every ability in the game because people would not want it to be consistent because it's about what's the most intuitive. Currently, it wasn't working intuitively and now it will. Very sensible. Summon Ultralisk cooldown has been increased. Yes! I'm so freaking tired of Ultralisk roaming the Nexus, running rampant, and ruining win rates for all heroes. And Kerrigan just breezing through easily with this pet of hers that can just not be stopped and just keeps dominating every objective. Cooldown now also counts down with... Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. At least, uh, you know, the, cool the, the duration of Ultralisk. It's going to get subtracted from the total duration. That's, uh, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, I guess I should read everything before I, I, I go too crazy. The Ultralist lasts for 20 seconds, which also means that the cool, new cooldown will be between 80 seconds if it gets deleted instantly or 60. So it can be up to 10 better or worse. If it lasts for more than half of its duration, it's a buff. If it lasts for less than half of its duration, it's a nerf. So overall, I would say it's fairly neutral. If you kill the ultra quickly, good job on you. And, uh, and I guess that's a good thing. It's a good change, but I do think that ultra disc is a little bit weak uh, compared to Maelstrom. And I don't think it really needed the burf, the buff nerf. Uh, what is cool about it is that when you get the upgraded heroic to Rask, Basically, it will pretty much be available again once the Ultra finally dies. So that's a cool thing. Health increase. Yay! Raiders, Raiders. And damage increase. Wow! It will not die to a single multi-shot anymore. 
And it will do a little bit more damage. Not bad. Do you want ducks? The buff tracker now shows a specific number for heroes hit and how many hits are required to complete the quest reward. Sounds like a good thing. I doubt they would have made it worse. Multiclass. Health gain reduced from 60 to 40. Hey, wasn't it 70 guys? I seem to remember it 70%. I know it was 60 once, but I thought it went to 70. Am I wrong? Either way, it's only 40 now. And and he grants he gets granted 15 armor so i think it's a buff a pretty pretty fair buff so it becomes more tanky uh, when he has taunt a little bit more tanky but it also means that he, and it also means that he has more effect from all kinds of heals and he's got self heal talents and he's got allied heal talents because Health that has armor is 15% more effective than health that doesn't have the armor. So when you get a new health that normally would be worth 100 points, it's now worth 115 points. Makes sense, right? So it's good. It's good if Varian ever receives heals from himself or others. And then a little bit less armor from Banner of Ironforge. So in order to receive the uh, effectiveness of... of, of um, I don't know what I was going to say, actually. That's kind of weird. It seems like I was mid-sentence. Anyway, I think it's okay. We'll see whether Varian Twin Blades or Colossus Smash is now effective. Because it nerfed it for his alternates. It seems like they were trying to buff Varian's alternates with the other changes. And now this is a small nerf to that once again. Um, Specialist, Asmodan. Ch casting Demonic Invasion will now remove clear minions lingering from the previous cast. What's face? Greetings, oh yes, friend. they're permanent. Okay, I guess. I, I I can count on one finger the amount of times that I still had previous demons when I got new ones. Taste for blood. Killing a hero with Globe of Annihilation will now increase its damage by 10. Good. Gazlo. Activates focus stars. To order nearby okay so now he can always with his one focus turret so that used to be indentured to robogobo turrets give more vision deal less damage death lasers don't have to insta cast at the end of its charging period that's good that was clunky and it can also be cancelled with a full refund good good changes so far so good increase cast range by a lot okay Robogobo no longer grants focus turrets because he already has it. No longer grants bonus PvE. Instead, double attack. Okay, so it used to be triple on only PvE. Now it's double against everything. That means he's still good against buildings. Not as good. Not as much of a let's YOLO your keep. But he's more useful in fights. Tried Misha since leash change. Yes. It's really nice. I'm glad you think so. I thought it was pretty nice as well. Activate to gain 30 armor and 30 movement speed. Okay, so they embedded sprint inside Robogobo, which I guess is a good thing if it was still full PvE, because you would need to always run away and choose sprint if you want to play Robogobo. It was the only real talent, in my opinion. It's now been put into it, but he's not a full PvE monster anymore because he also has PvP. Still, it's nice, I guess, to have sprint inside of it. No more Regen Master. New talent Goblin Repairs. Quest Gather Regeneration Globe to permanently gain 1 health per second. And he gains an additional health per second. Okay. It's Regen Master. Mercenary Lord. Passive removed. New one. Hired Goons. Nice! You get Dragoons. Excellent. Non boss mercs deal more damage near you. Your turns also gain armor from minions and mercs. Okay. Instead of you, it's your turrets. I'm not sure how that makes sense per se, but okay. Uh, Clockwork Steam Fist. Duration bonus per attack decreased from 2 to 1.5 seconds. Okay, a little bit of a nerf. Engine Gonk. Slow amount. I mean, I like this one, but that's, that's a pity. Engine Gunk. Less slow. Oh, Rocket. Search arc increase from 65 degrees to 80. So before it would shoot like this and it could also shoot two targets here. 
Now, uh, here as well. Oh, that hurt. Should do some uh, flexing first. But okay, that's that's pretty good change, I guess. Uh, hyper focus coils also lowers the mana cost of death laser by 50%. Wonderful. Level 13, move to 16. Easy peasy is more slow. Hmm, pretty impressive. Extra large bombs no longer increase cast range, and there's an additional functionality. If he is stu stunned or rooted, he drop. <laughs> wow, that's funny. He drops a, a charge at his feet. It's a four second duration, so it's not gonna per se save him, but that seems pretty funny. Lol. Goblin Fusion moved to 13, so this is the laser talent that does more damage. So now you need to choose between these two. Superior schematics. Nearby turrets gain additional range instead of damage. These stay that way until you leave the new longer range. Aha! Aha! Am I overestimating 80 degrees? No, it's 10 less than 90, which would be level. Anyway. Uh, Mecha Lord grants 25 armor. Oh. Oh! So he gets his 300%, just like it was before. Hello, Grubby. I am a fan since forever. Just got some money saved, so I want to share that with you. You actually got me back to hot since I have not been playing for a year or so. Lots of love. Keep up the good work. And best wishes from Slovakia. Less than three. Lots of love to you too. Thank you, uh, Doppelhorn Unicorn. Thank you very much. Glad you enjoy. I feel like you think 90 is 180. No, it's like the initial target is here and it has a search Reading radius friend. of 85 degrees. And it attacks two additional targets. So it can 85 here and 85 here. Am I not? Am I not wrong? 85 and 85, because it's two targets. Um, and then firing my lasers. So he gets his triple back against both PvP and PvE and the armor. So overall Robo Gobble buffs. And then laser center points now track mouse cursor, like Leeming's magic missiles. Oh, okay, that's good because before it was a bit weird. You got used to it, but there you go. Okay, some buffs. Uh, warriors. We're doing a pass on our warriors. We want. I think this is an important one because I've seen some malcontent from people. So I want to see, is it... Uh, oh, it's 42 on each side. Okay. I want, yeah, we're going to play Probius after this. But I just want to see because this is living among the community I saw. So I want to see what's up. Uh, we're currently doing a pass on our warriors. And we want to be able to better Reading separate those spring. that are intended to be able to solo time for Lake the team. Tarouge. It's Ogar. Thank you. Um, and those who are better identified as bruisers. With armor coming into the game, we saw an opportunity to make our warriors have unique roles for their team. So that the strongest or most survivable few weren't identified and always favored regardless of the enemy team composition. In this patch, we've taken a pass at both Arthas and Anubarak to better embrace their roles as solo warriors for the team. But, but normally they aren't, I think. They are bruisers, but apparently Bizzle wants them to be a tank. They have both received significant changes, largely with the theme of adding control and or survivability to their kits at the cost of damage. While we know the players enjoy putting out that damage, we think this is a healthier direction for the game and should make the decision of which warrior to bring into a team more meaningful. We're also hoping that this direction helps push against the trend of it being the correct choice to bring multiple warriors to a team. Because some can bring both CC and survivability while also doing as much damage as our assassins. I think it's not entirely wrong. But they still don't do as much burst normally but let's just let's just evaluate this first i was watching hcc and uh in team dignitas menace jaina was doing half the damage of jpl's tyriel in one of the games but jaina is a slight frostbolt poke mage 
that stays out of combat because if she does too much damage she will die so once she finally has an opportunity she goes in does her spells and does big burst far better burst than Tyrael can do so while her damage numbers stay low and she is a ranged assassin she does it during relevant times she's not a poke mage generally she's a burst mage a uh, Tyrael does a lot of sustain damage not burst does get higher numbers though uh, so but it is true that Tyrael can do pretty good damage so can Anubarak and it's true that Anubarak over the course of a game can have top damage currently and yet he doesn't always get drafted in fact he doesn't get drafted a lot unless he's filling the anti-mage role in competitive at least and in hero league for the most part i didn't see him get drafted at all i do think it would go up without changes <sighs> but it is true that there's very few solo tanks right now for various reasons and so to actually get more solo tanks from the existing roster i don't think it's bad per se although it is true also that i will miss a new rocket's damage dealer i would prefer if new solo tanks were added to the game rather than the current ones are changed but there is also a duration of time there and uh you know time is also a resource having read this there's some things that i don't fully understand yet some maybe that i do some things i may agree or others i may not agree but let's first go on to the warriors so we can try to form our initial opinion which will then be shown to be true or not through not just days of play but weeks or months if there are big changes we're gonna feel like knee-jerk reactions we'll have to see whether that's true so first of all once again if people don't get it spell armor means damage percentage reduction from all magical sources and physical armor means from all auto attack sources and generally armor is from all sources so when it says 25 armor that means 25 percent damage reduction of that source now that you know that know that the nubarak in live server Greetings, has a quarter 25 percent damage reduction spell armor and it's going to go to 20. basic attack damage will take a small penalty four percent shield goes up and the tide goes down shield goes up burrow charge available more he also does a slow on burrow charge less damage less locust swarm damage and less healing he will no longer have extended spikes dampened magic assault scarab you will now get resilient scarabs your beetles have 50 spell armor uh nerubian <laughs> nerubian armor. i mean I, I i don't think of beetles as needing armor per se the same as with the puffer fish at least when i did the puffer fish spell armor it didn't feel like it helped survivability at all. But uh, maybe it's good. I don't know. Uh, I guess the beetles stay alive against mages. Every 8 seconds, Nerubian armor. Gain 30 spell armor against the next ability and subsequent abilities cast against you for 1.5. So instead of dampened magic, the 50, he gets 30. For the rest, it's the same. No more locust needles. No more wave clear for him there. Movement speed carapace is now on 4 instead of 7. Next, subterranean shield. When you cast burrow charge, you gain a shield for 5 seconds. Doesn't say how much though, but I guess we can take a look now. Let me take a look. Wait a minute, it does... Oh yes. Uh... Three sixty-five. at uh, level one that's a pretty big shield pretty big leeching scarabs also increases the damage of your beetles by 20 percent okay so assault scarabs is embedded in the leech at seven 13 bed of barbs move to four damage decrease by half it's fair for an earlier talent plus the general pass over of damage reduction that they want acid drenched Mandibles. Attacking a hero that is slowed, rooted, or stunned increases your basic attack damage by 70% for 3 seconds. Arr. So it's Executioner. An early Executioner of a massive size. He's still going to do really good damage then. I think. Because he's pretty much slowing, rooting, and stunning all the time. 
But it's only basic attack damage. Okay. Uh, blood for blood, removed. Aw. Epicenter, decrease cooldown reduction. Aw. But of course he has a shorter base duration already. New talent. Debilitation. Enemy heroes hit by burrow charge have the spell or power reduced by 50% for 4 seconds. This is an important part, I feel, of their... Uh, of their bit of their idea for anti mage warriorness. How good is this? I think it's pretty good. It is basically casting a shrink ray on a mage. Their auto attack is unaffected, but most mages have pretty small auto attack. The only exception is Chromie. And it's, it's, it's all heroes, by the way. It works on others. But let's just talk about mages here. You cast a shrink ray on them every time you burrow charge, which has a duration, a, a cooldown of 12. And not reducible because it's the same tier. So every 12 seconds, you can shrink ray multiple heroes on their spell, arm, uh, spell power. To me, it seems like a very strong talent. And epicenter being nerfed already not being that great is going to completely get sh it's it's not even in the same universe we're not talking about a dwarf star and a sun we're not talking about nuclear fusion compared to a duracell battery we are talking about the universe and your backyard that kind of difference between these two debilitation seems very strong keep in mind that spell power Immediate also affects friend. your healing you just got beaned, Britsy beaned. Okay. So this one is very strong. And then, level 20, Hardened Shield has been removed. Which makes me wonder how he can be a solo tank. And then, nullification shield. Aha! So he can be a solo tank against mages, supposedly. 60 Greetings, spell armor. Friend. Wait, 60 plus his base of 20, so it'll be 80, but 75 is the cap, so it's 75, 80 minus the 5 to cap it. And also, if someone has a spell armor reduction on you or a vulnerability on you, that gets tallied. So it's 80, rounded down to 75, but if it's 80 minus 25, that's 55 spell armor. And minus 25 in physical. Clear? It doesn't say the cooldown, but luckily I've got the game open. And it's a 40 second cooldown, which is shorter than Heart and Shield, which is a minute. He still has rewind, by the way. Um, seeing this, I don't see a Nubarak as a solo tank in all situations, which they said that they want. But only against mages, he can be a solo tank, which I will agree is probably possible. Let's read what they have to say about it. Nurok has received some baseline changes and talent tweaks to embrace his role as an anti-caster main tank. New additions to the blah blah blah. Understandably, some players may be wondering, read upset and rioting, why we lowered his spell armor when we want him to be an anti-caster, but we felt the 25 base spell armor was a little too pointed in countering casters, as they have no real options to deal with it when it is on a hero baseline. By giving him these changes, we're hoping to make him a more well-rounded warrior while still filling a niche that previously did not exist in our game. Mm. Well, I will say this. I don't completely understand how he will become a more well-rounded warrior because of it. So I don't agree with this. And I'm going to slightly reduce the music, by the way. I don't agree with that part. But I will say that I agree because of a different reason. I think that play and counterplay are very important. And so the Nerubian armor, which is basically his spell armor, or even if it was dampened magic, should be more strong and his base should be less strong. Why? It's so that when, when you want... If you play a Nubarak well... You get more rewarded for functioning within your strength time of the the uptime of this spell of this passive and you get 
more punished for functioning outside of it. Should it be six and a half seconds uptime, one and a half down, uh, sorry, six and a half downtime, one and a half up? That's debatable. But the, the idea of stronger during that time, weaker during not the time, is a good change. And I do think that even outside of Damp and Magic previously, Anubarak took very irrelevant damage from Magic. So this part itself, I agree with. I don't think it makes him a more well-rounded warrior to do it that way. Uh, and I don't think he will even do that much less damage. This is 4%. This is a bit more than 4. This is 5%. And this is 10%. Bird charge is about 10. And then he gets 70% executioner at 13. And they also remove bed of barb. So I guess you just get executioner. And you get ability power reduction. And I think he becomes pretty insane. And so I would say that. Even though what they said about Warrior for Nubrak, they did not succeed. But what I'm not sure is if it's overall a buff or a nerf. We're going to have to try it out. Let's not riot. Artanis, basic attack. Reduce the period during which Artanis is locked in place during his basics to be consistent with other heroes with similar attack times. Good. Good. Very good. Arthas. Health increase. Health regen increase. Basic attack damage reduction. And a number of changes. Frostmourne Hungers now deals a 99 bonus damage when hitting enemies. It's no longer based on his normal basic attack damage. Okay. Death Coil. Heal increase. Frozen Tempest. Damage reduction. Now has m movement and attack speed slow. Embedded in it. Aha! Yeah, because that level 13 was pretty shit. The one that uh, reduced attack speed over time. It was uh, quite weak compared to imposing. We don't give a shit about the patch notes. Just go through it quick like everyone else and play the game. Sorry, Manocha, You can come back later. I care about the patch notes, which is why I read it. I'm sorry you don't feel like it. But it's very important for me to know the game. And I haven't had time to look. So we might as well look together. Sorry you feel that way. Um, yes. Now functions as an aura. Same as Lucio's crossfade. When concerning stuns and silences. If Arthas is stunned or silenced. He will no longer be able to toggle frozen tempers on or off. But if it is active. It will persist for the duration of stun or silence. Interesting. Okay. I think that's, uh, I think that's good. Yeah, because before when he got uh, polymorphed, he will have to turn it on again. It was quite tedious. Army of the Dead. Cooldown lowered from 100 to 80 seconds. Okay. Mana cost reduced. Ghouls do more damage. And ghoul health has increased. Wow. Overall, it seems like Arthas is buffed when I'm just going by this. But of course, I haven't seen his talent yet. Let's look at the talents. No more block. Aww. But of course, did he really need block? He already has physical armor, uh, attack speed reduction. Block seems a bit excessive and possibly OP against auto attack. Plus, it's not like block really has like that much counterplay. I guess in theory it does, but in reality, not really. I guess, I guess it could. You could have a friendly Morales that helps you proc the initial block charges, but because they come back so inconsistently, I don't feel like... You're really countering it that much. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to remove a generic and replace it with a, a hero-based block. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, so they just buffed it. Excellent. Good change. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Eternal Hunger trait. Using Frostmourne Hungers on an enemy <laughs> Permanently increases the mana. I mean, I feel like I'm just dead now. <laughs> it's a better block. Good. Very good. Uh, quest. Using Frostmourne Hunger. Uh, yeah. I feel like I, I can't use my brain anymore. I don't know what this means anymore. 
Frost Presence Quest, root 5 heroes to reduce the cooldown of Hunting Blast and after you root you also increase the range and then after more quests you'll... Okay, so they put all those root changes, uh, those root talents into one quest thing. So you no longer have the instant cooldown reduction when you hit someone and you no longer get the Trail of Frost at 13, it's all embedded in here. But a very easy quest, 5 and 10. And this is pretty good, this, this is, it's a big... It's a big buff. And it's fun. Biting Cold, which is the damage. E has been moved to 13. It was at 4. Frozen Waste. After hitting enemy heroes 150 times with Frozen Tempest, which I think happens in about 2 seconds. The movement and attack speed slows the Frozen Tempest last for an additional 1.5 seconds against enemy heroes. That means that when you turn it off or they leave your range, they get still slowed in movement and attack speed after you complete the quest seems nice that's a buff icy talents increase arthas's attack speed by three percent each time an enemy hero is hit by frozen tempest for one and a half seconds stacking up to 60. <laughs> frostmart hungers okay that seems good i don't know how fast it goes Death Lord, increase the range bonus on Death Coil from 25 to 30, and also increase the cooldown reduction from 2 to 3. Hmm, maybe Coil Talent can be nice. 7. Immortal Coil, bonus healing now applies to self casting Death Coil. Aha! So before, you could coil yourself or coil an opponent. Now you can coil an opponent for damage. You would get more healing than if you coil yourself. Now you also get same healing on yourself no matter what. So you can either choose to heal yourself for fixed amount, which is higher, or also damage an opponent and get that healing with a delay. So this is um, a good change, I think, because now when there's no enemy, you can still heal yourself for the full buffed amount. And it creates an interesting point where you can choose to heal yourself, which is faster, even in combat when there's an opponent, even if you can get bonus damage for free, it's not entirely free because coiling yourself is faster than waiting for the coil to bounce back. So it becomes a judgment call. Can I coil someone first, get that healing slightly slower, or do I need it right now? But the bonus healing has been reduced from 100 to 50. Oh, no. All right. Uh, Icebound Fortitude has a cooldown reduction every 35 instead of 40. Also, it's doggy time. To see that. Greetings, friend. Right, doodles. Thanks for subbing. Okay, moving on. Uh, Trail of Frost removed. We know because it's been embedded in the level one quest. Frigid winds removed. Shattered armor. Enemy heroes rooted by howling blast have their armor reduced by fifteen for four seconds. That feels very much like that feels very much like um the haka's level 13 that has the physical armor reduction i'm just gonna check i mean general armor reduction uh, which is 10 armor reduction and Ar arthas with howling blast is w will do 15. it was very strong for the haka but you could spec into it by having nearly 100 percent uptime as the haka and this is not as often Heroes who don't have armor? Well, you can. every hero is said to have zero armor. So minus 15 means you will take bonus damage. It's the equivalent of calling it vulnerability in Gyalo. It seems pretty strong. It is not up as often as when the Haka does it to you. But rooting someone and having them be vulnerable is a pretty potent combo. And it's four seconds. It's slightly more than the Haka as well. Also, Frost Strike, where Frostmort Hunger supplies is slow. It's pretty poor Greetings, overlap friend. with all the other things. Thank you. 
So normally you wouldn't do it because it overlaps with your E slow, your W root, blah, blah, blah. Why would you also need a slow in your trade? It is more now, 50% instead of 40. So that makes it slightly more established than, uh, you know, just having this weird overlap that basically doesn't stack. 50 is a lot. So maybe it's worth picking. But probably not. But maybe. Biting Cold. Frozen Tempest does 12.5% increased damage per second to enemies. Up to 50% over 4 seconds. Okay. How much was it at 4? 30? And now it starts at 12 and a half and then ends at 30. Okay. Seems okay. His whole play style is to get in range and stay in range. He's that kind of bruiser. The longer you can stay, the more benefits you get in every way. Embrace death now also affects the healing of death coil. Oh, it didn't? Okay, so you, when you are low, you will do more bonus damage and you get more healing back from it. Greetings, I thought it already friend. did. Thank you, Buster. Maybe it didn't. Now it does. Anti Magic Shell no longer provides 100 spell armor. Arthas now takes zero damage from spells instead. Aha! Because if he had vulnerability, he would still take a bit of damage. 100 minus 25. Oh, maybe if you self-cast it. Well, that makes sense. Maybe. Yeah, Nordic fat cheese, you might be right. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay. This can no longer be circumvented with vulnerability. Instead, he just doesn't take damage. And he heals 25% of the damage prevented. Okay. I'm not sure I fully know what that means if he has vulnerability on him. Example, he takes a thousand damage pyroblast to the face. It is voided to zero. He heals 250. Makes sense, right? Now, if he has vulnerability and he would take 1250 damage from a thousand damage pyroblast, would it count as a 1250 block or a thousand block? That I don't know. But we'll have to wait and see or test it. For a long time, Arthas walked the line between being a bruiser and a tank, so it was always intended he's more of a tank than a bruiser. With armor in the game, we saw the opportunity to really embrace him being that slow approach of death that he encapsulated so well in Wrath of the Lich King. Wait, is that a Hearthstone expansion? Arthas' crowd control capability and survivability have been significantly increased. He should really shine as the warrior to bring to the if the enemy team has multiple melees, or those who strongly rely on their auto attacks. I think that works. No, I'm just kidding, guys. I never played WoW. It was, uh, it was lame, I know. But you did get you baited, so... <laughs> Troll a lot. Uh, in return for his extra control on teamfights, his damage has been reduced. While he will not put out damage as quickly as before, his ability to kill enemies will now rely much more on how long he can keep them in his Frozen Tempest. As once they're in it, it'll be very difficult for them to escape without using some kind of nobility. Gotta call the queen or king. Ah, mobility. Yes, that makes more sense. Okay. Cho, we agreed we're gonna skip it because it's a bit too extensive. So what do we think about Arthas? Willing to give it a shot. I don't think it's time to get our picnic baskets out and panic. There's no ants in our basket yet, I don't think. Okay, moving on. Johanna, plus 25 physical armor. Health reduction. Health regen reduction. Reinforce. Greetings, Gets less friend. block. Three months already? Indeed a good time spent when I am here. Keep it up, Grubster. Thank less you very than much. Three. Nocte Anima. No more ampule. That's okay. From the moment I tested Johanna, pre 
release. I've never understood why she has both amplified healing. Greetings, and laws about. It was always going to be which one is better. Period. Thank you for the sub. So, yeah. Spell shield. Uh, passive removed. Not a lot of people took it. Some did. It made her also stronger against spells sometimes. Not just auto attack. She's the premier anti-auto attack hero. So I think that's fine to remove it. If they think that it balances out. I'm not sure why she receives physical armor reduction. But I suppose they just want to make her an anti-auto attacker. She already has blind. That protects her allies and herself. But for the rest they still wanted this. Is that a good thing or not? Mm, it makes her weaker against mages in general it allows her to be weaker against mages which without doing this you do not achieve this is just a reflection of this and for the rest they just wanted her better against mages uh, worse against mages I think that's okay she just got she just got uh, more pushed in a direction which I think is a good thing so that it becomes less uh, gray area between warriors and more uh, sophisticated. This one is the one probably that I don't get. Uh, base maximum health reduced from 2468. Da, da, da. Spell armor. Okay. Well now clamp to the maximum cost range of the ability. Greetings, is that friend. a good thing? I think yes. Is it scary that a team would be able to draft mages and ban the anti-mages, therefore limiting counterplay via bans? You can pick all the mages yourself. Go full five mage picks. A little bit too soon for me to be able to answer that question. Well, well. Let's try not to be scared. Let's let's play and, and, and see how it works. There seems to be a fair amount of anti-mages. You've got cloaked heroes. Uh, you've got uh, Stitches, Anubarak, now apparently Tyrael, and uh, huh. Imposing Will has been removed. Thank God, the talent was Greetings, bullish. It was so bullish, it really, it really bullied people. That was such a dumb... If you spidered Tyrael, or you spidered something next to Tyrael, he goes in, he lets the spider take a nibble out of his knee, you become slowed for 50% in both your attack speed and your movement speed. That's nonsense. So glad this is gone. This gets buffed a little bit. Hardened shield is removed. That's fine. You want him to die anyway, so you can use your trait. You gain spell armor instead. Now, there's no explanation here, so I'm not quite sure why Tyrael is the anti-mage suddenly. Mm. Well, he's got a low health pool with some shields, so that makes him better against auto attackers with Giant Killer. Just a bit. And now he doesn't have uh, Imposing, and he becomes a bit better against Mage. I'm not sure why that would make him better against... Like, why, that needs, why he needs to be better against Mage. So, a big question mark here for me, for Tyrael. Moving on. Uh, I, I mean, I just hope there can be some uh, understanding about this one. Uh, okay. Some bug fixes. Uh, I generally don't go over this in the uh, patch notes preview. Now, I feel like maybe imposing will could be reworked a bit or replace with something else possibly the just reduction ju just removal of it without compensation i'm not sure is a very good thing but anyway that was the patch a review not really because we haven't tried it yet the review should actually be more relevant but really good to get a first look at it that was the patch preview <laughs> What?